Gatsby and Boris. We're gonna take him back home now to the airport. Oh, Gatsby's like gonna be all sad now. I love you. Hey guys, I just got back from dropping off Boris at the airport. That was a really fun time that we had with meeting up all the Cornell friends again. Anyway, today is going to be a really busy day because I have to catch up on all the work that I missed. So I got to do some work. I got to go right now to pick up the tax forms. They're ready for, to be picked up and to be filed. I'll bring the dog out at that time because it's right next to the dog park. Busy day. Ready to go to the dog park? First stopping off at the accountants. I'm kind of nervous because I don't know how much I'm gonna end up having to pay. <laughs> I'm popping tags every day, it looked like my B day. These corgis suck, so I nicknamed these corgis BJ. Alexander made me queen, I'm pulling up the king, I'm late to my own party. Wanted to get it, I don't be wanted for nothing. I mean, I do what I do, it must be counted for something. I don't be jumping from topic to topic, stay in my pocket. I got your rent in my pocket, so can I pay you to pop it? Cash money, getting six albums. No wish, ziggas on a wish album. The corgis apologize when a corgi does you. That's a big problem. Want some more? Oh, okay, I got my taxes back now, so I gotta go and pay all of this money off. I made a little bit more money this year than I did last year, I think from YouTube stuff. I was paying estimated taxes for the previous year, which means that I actually owe a little bit more money in taxes, so I gotta do that. I gotta sell my Amiibos. Whoops, I totally forgot to vlog. Gatsby had so much fun with another dog, a poodle that was named Gatsby. We're driving back already. <laughs> Gatsby's exhausted. Sorry about that, maybe I'll take him to another like outing today. The window washers are here. Gatsby's like, what? Who's that Gatsby? Who's there? Do you see them? Do you see them? <laughs> are you scared? <laughs> It's okay, I'll protect you. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> so scared. It's okay, dude. Okay, I think it's time to open Rosalina. I've been holding off for so long, but I was thinking, I was like, what am I holding off on? Because no matter what, I'm gonna open it eventually. I made a space for Rosalina too, right here. She's really hard to get because she was a Target exclusive and that day they announced after I got her, the day that they released it, they announced that they're not making any more and that was it. So, and this is the only one that's confirmed other than Gold Mario that they said they're never making ever again. So, that's why it's rare. It's a Target exclusive. If you guys saw my vlog, oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, here it goes. Ta-da! Awesome! It is such a nice day outside. Oh, yes, perfect day to play tennis. All balls are my side. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing another doggy time right now. He's so excited. You ready? Yeah? Okay, let's go. Gatsby and Simba. Go, go, go. What a lucky doggy. Two parks in one day, huh? You must be tired. They have everything here. Look, I'm with Sean. We're at Toys R Us right now, looking at Amiibos. The best thing is, even though it's more expensive here, what you do is you just price match it. They do price matches, so. They even have Mega Man and Sonic. They got everything. You gonna get one? Haha. <laughs> Everyone's here. 
He has a choice. He's choosing the best one. It's so hard. Everything, every single one of them has, has like, a defect. Yeah, like look at that one. It has a mark on oh, the. Oh yeah, I see that. On the. <laughs> yeah. At least he can choose. Amiibo. These are all the new ones that nobody wants because they're so easy to get. <laughs> that one has like a little blob on the yellow of the shirt. Uh, uh, and this one, I don't know. It's kind of lighter color. Yeah. The Bowsers are cool. But it's not going to match my other ones because these are bigger than the regular Amiibos. The Super Smash Brothers line. I, I draw a line. I'm only going to get the Super Smash Brothers one, except for Gold Mario. He chose that one. Oh, nope. Oh, the back has a different. Oh my gosh. Look, Donkey Kong has two different prices. $13.99 for this Donkey Kong, $10.99 for this one. And they're the exact same thing. Oh, this one has dirty cows. <laughs> Kirby and Zelda are apparently really rare in Europe, which is really weird. And Ike is really common there. Look, he got it. Hooray! Yes. A win. A win for Sean. Finally. <laughs> Check out what I got. Codename Steam with Amiibo support. But I don't have a new 3DS. I have the old one. I love RTS, real-time strategy games. So we got to see how good this is. I'll let you guys know. So it has been a really long time since I've reviewed a movie. I had been holding off on saying what my top 10 movies of the year were because I hadn't seen all of them until now. I finally saw pretty much every single movie that is worth watching of 2014. Now is a really good time to make my list of the, my personal top 10 movies of 2014 and also my bottom picks. Let's start off with number 10. Selma, the Martin Luther King movie nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Great performance by David Oyelowo, and I really liked the way that they focused on a very specific time period in Selma. It wasn't like a full biography about Martin Luther King. Number nine, Nightcrawler. I just saw this movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Nightcrawlers apparently are people who listen in on the 911 calls and run over to the accident and film it and sell the film to the Daily News. Nightcrawler is a very clever movie. I really enjoyed the cinematography. Well, I found it to be hard to watch because he is such a despicable person. It was still a great movie. Number eight, Edge of Tomorrow. Starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt in which he has to relive the day over and over and over again. It's kind of like an action movie version of Groundhog's Day. The visual effects were very well done and the action was just really great. It's just one of those concept movies that I thought was really fun, similar to the, the previous year's Oblivion. Number seven, The Imitation Game. Starring Benedict Cumberbatch, this one was about Alan Turning, who pretty much invented the computer trying to solve the Enigma code during World War II. The acting was great by Keira Knightley and Benedict Cumberbatch. It was just a very solid, very good movie to watch. Next, number six, X-Men Days of Future Past. I really enjoyed this movie because of what they did with it. I thought it was very clever how they decided to use Jennifer Lawrence. And I really enjoyed how they were able to marry both the present and the past X-Men. I enjoyed it. Number five, Birdman. I thought that the movie was so incredibly made. From a filmmaking point of view, this one is one of the best. The whole movie was filmed to look like it was done all in one shot. There's so much food for thought in this movie. It's just like a movie where you analyze everything. The meanings behind every single thing that happens. And it's just not my personal favorite. Number four, Interstellar. Interstellar was the only movie that I saw in theaters twice in 2014. There's a lot of food for thought. It requires a lot of thinking. And I do think that if you are not really a big Chris Nolan fan, for example, if you did not like Inception, you may not like this movie because it requires a lot of concepts that you have to really just buy. Number three, The Grand Budapest Hotel. When I watch this movie, I'm like, only Wes Anderson could have made this movie. It's just like everything about it, it just has its little isms. I don't even know what else to call it. It's so quirky. Visually, it is an incredible movie. Stylistically, it's an incredible movie. I really liked it. I actually bought this movie on Blu-ray for my family for Christmas. Number two! I actually did switch my choices around for this. My second choice now is Boyhood. It is still an incredible movie. I can understand that if you're too young or too old, you may not really enjoy this movie and you probably would find it boring because 
you have not experienced all the things that are in Boyhood. The movie is all about relating to Eller Coltrane's character in the movie. But this is really like the typical American childhood. And it was done so well. They filmed over 12 years. I personally really enjoyed it. I would rank it number two. And number one, I switched this because I recently watched it for a third time after buying it on Blu-ray. And I thought, yes, this is my favorite movie. It is Whiplash. Everything about it, the acting, the performances. I know J.K. Simmons won for Best Supporting Actor for his role in the movie, but I do believe that Miles Teller also should have been nominated. The movie is about a kid trying to become one of the greats, how he is so driven to become one of the best. Just watching someone who's so passionate about something, and like I feel the same way, I have that drive too. I was able to connect with a lot of what that movie was about. And I thought that I would give one honorable mention movie, which would be The Wind Rises. This movie kind of came out between 2013 and 2014, so I didn't really know if I would put it on the list or not. But I thought The Wind Rises was so great. This is Hayao Miyazaki's movie. It was nominated for Best Animated Film for last year. This is his final movie, and it is basically an allegory about life. One note though, it is not for kids at all. This movie will be so boring. It is for adults, okay? Next, let's go to my bottom three movies of the year. First, let's go with the honorable mention for worst movie of the year, because it didn't make my list, but it would have to be Muppets Most Wanted. Oh my gosh, that was such a waste of everything. I grew up watching Muppets when I was younger, I thought this was like the worst Muppets movie and one of the worst movies of the year. Anyway, so now to my bottom three worst movies of the year. Number three, The Giver. I don't really have too much to say about it. I remember when I was watching it in the beginning, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad of a movie. But as it kept going on, I was like, oh my gosh. This is of course based off of the book that everyone had to read when they were younger. All the messages from the book were pretty much lost in the movie. I just don't even want to talk about it. It was just so poorly done. The second worst movie of the year, I would say, is A Million Ways to Die in the West. None of the jokes were funny at all in the movie. I was like, it just seemed like people were trying really hard to be funny, and the movie was very dull and it was very long. And again, I don't really want to talk about it because it's just so bad. And so let's just move on to the worst movie of the year. My personal choice for the worst movie of the year is Sex Tape. It was so bad. It wasn't funny and like everything about the movie was so incredibly predictable. Nothing really happens. I thought that they would go on like this wild chase to, to collect the tape from all their friends after they had made a mistake and uploaded it to the cloud. And yet, they go to like one house and that was pretty much it and it was just a really big waste of time. The acting was terrible, the characters were terrible and I really really like Jason Segel and I really like Cameron Diaz too and it just didn't work. It just wasn't funny and it was just not believable and it was just very 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 painful to watch. Yeah. Those were my top and bottom picks of the year. In the comments below, put down what you think I missed. For example, Guardians of the Galaxy, Big Hero 6, or The Fault in Our Stars. Put it in the comments below, let me know. Yay, you were all quiet this time while I was filming. Thank you, thank you sir. Anyway, it's getting super late. I am getting so tired, so I'm gonna head to bed. I'll see you guys later. Good night. <sighs> nice view. The Bay Area. <sighs> Gatsby, look at him. Enjoying the view by himself. Isn't that a nice view, Gatsby? Forgot to mention that today is like the anniversary of Ryan and Gatsby. Ryan getting Gatsby. We got him one 